Hey everyone, it's par for the discourse. It is May 16th, 2021. I'm Nicole coming to you from Madrid and this is Erica coming to you from Brooklyn. We've Hello. been friends since around 20-ish years old, I would say. And um, through these years, um, yeah, we've been friends and now, you know, the past year and a half, we said, let's, let's take our observations and uh, record them. So we have something to look at later on <laughs> to uh, prove that all these things happened, whether it be uh, crazy behavior, pandemics, uh, what have you. <laughs> well, so the big confusing news here in America is that the CDC said if you're fully vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask anymore. But then there's just all of these places that you still have to wear a mask and everybody's confused. And I just think, keep wearing the mask. But listen, let me ask you this, because I, I, I am reading and keeping up with it, but I'm not sure what they mean by, okay, there's some places that you still have to wear one, but is that apart from an airport, where is that? <laughs> any public transportation you still have to have it on but didn't you tell me that you've seen people in the subway without it yeah and it's scary i thought it was I mean, have... they're, they're just they can't enforce it that's what i think is is when it comes down to is it, there's there's no one enforcing it so what are you going to keep it just it has to be people are just choosing to wear it or not wear it but i mean you should you're even allowed through the turnstile if you don't have have it on it's because gonna stop you we're not allowed like you just don't see that here and there's no place where someone doesn't have it on like you have to have it or you can't go through there's like security people i, I mean i've just been with i've seen people on the subway just not wearing them and i'm like stay away from me and and i just said this is gonna make me continue to wear a mask forever and that's fine i don't care uh i will wear the mask um Let's yeah. see. But it just makes, it seems like the people who have to like follow guideline type people um, like don't know what decisions to make now. Um, I think just using common sense is how, you know, you get through life. So we'll see who. <laughs> well, you know, the rules are made for the morons really. I mean, but I just don't understand how it came out of nowhere because one day it was like, okay, if you are vaccinated, you don't have to wear it anymore in, in uh, outdoor areas, which I think is fine. I think that's a good rule. But then it yeah. went from that one day to the next day, it was like, uh, okay, now you don't have to wear it at all. And I was just like, that's really jumping. And, and like we said, who, we're not being forced or asked to carry our vaccination cards around with us although you get a vaccination card with your name on it and, and whatever, okay. which I'm sure it's a piece of paper. It's uh, I'm sure it's easily forgeable. And I just don't think, I think people who don't want to get vaccinated are going to lie. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's, it's wear your mask, whatever. Nevertheless, so, I am jealous because I'm like not even close to being where you are. And I just, I'm like, I want to be able to do things again. I want to be able to like, not that I'm suffering. I'm fine, like in my own little bubble, but I'd like to, you know, go out back to the bars and restaurants and doing things like that. But, you know, the near, the end is coming, I guess, but, um, you know, there are parts of it I still am like, okay, with not having to get together with people or not having to do certain things. I think we can, CP, I, I'm, I've always been more of, I enjoy one-on-one -on -one sit down with somebody. Um, you know, we can still do those things. I don't, I think we can socially distance and, and see each other and hang out. Uh, um, yeah, I'm just glad I'm not a young person because I think maybe those are things that I really needed to do when I was younger is be exactly. at a club or be at a, a big packed arena or something. I don't need, I've, I've done that. I don't need that. Um, but I, I just see a lot of people so excited to do these things and they're not wearing masks and they're all getting together and 
It just yeah. that just seems like a recipe for disaster. And I seem like a um, maybe I'm more and more in the minority of still being very careful, but um, so be it. I mean, are you okay with the fact that you don't have to entertain people or you want to entertain people? Because now that the weather is getting nicer, you know, now we're getting into like barbecue season, parties outdoors, like uh, come over my house and. Well, see, that's, I'm always okay with a small gathering. Okay. So, so I'm always okay with we invite a, cu a couple over or a couple people are going to stop by. I don't want to have a big party. So, yeah, I don't know. And um, you know, when you have a big party that comes with other annoyances that you're not up for. Oh, <laughs> what? Are you going to have, are you going to do barbecues? You do have a grill, don't you? We got rid of it. Um, Ronnie probably would love to get a new one. We'll see. It's not a priority, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, the backyard, of course, is going to be the same problem last year is the overgrowth of uh, the neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> you got to see this window. I can't, I have to show you. The window is wide open, no screen, and all of the, um, you know, like the vines that grow up the side of a building, yeah. they're covering the window, but the window is open. I can see Jesus. it from, I'm going to send you a picture. So the stuff's coming through the house probably. Well, it's like a veil. Yeah. That's <laughs> but like the window is open. There's no screen. So yeah, as soon yeah. as, as it gets buggy, I mean, I don't, we, we, we've Let's discussed. The mosquitoes are going to start. Uh, coming. Yeah. Through. Yeah. And um, I don't know what uh, my dog has this beautiful uh, private backyard. He doesn't like staying out there. He like goes, does his business and comes right back in. He doesn't, because mm. I tried to hang out in the hammock with him yesterday and get some reading done. It was such a beautiful, I mean, the weather has really been nice. Yeah. And I just said, I, I want to just lay in the hammock and, and start, I have, I have like three books now I have to read. And uh, he was like whimpering at the door to be let back in. Really? Oh, I thought. What's wrong with you? It's beautiful out here. I was going to say, if the weather's nice, he should start liking it now. I know, I know. And I was there too. It's not like he usually like he just wants to be where I am, but he did not want to be outside. Is he a hermit? Do you have a hermit on your hands? Possibly. He's a homebody. Or is he a social introvert? <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he does not care about other dogs. When we go on a walk, he's like. How is he when people come over? He like looks the other way. He's like, if a person approaches him, like we were sitting on a bench yesterday after I got off the phone with you. And um, like a little kid came up and said, can I pet your dog? And he's very, he, he's, he's, he's sweet. Like he likes to be petted and stuff and he's cute. But other dogs, he's. He's not, not too, um, I don't know, it kind of depends, I guess. But if someone comes over your house and does he get territorial or? So what we've noticed, he's he likes women, hands down women, he's very friendly. And the only times he's kind of been a little off with a man who has stopped by is yeah. if, they don't, if they don't have a beard. I was good. I was gonna guess that. Shaven, he he actually kind of growled at a friend, um, and then he warmed up to him. But like at first, when he walked in, he was like, Rrr. "Oh, wait, he prefers the beard." Yes. Oh, it's the other way around. Okay. And well, because Ronnie has a beard. Yeah, yeah. So he sees other guys with beards, and I think he just he likes them. And the only time it's been a little bit of a. Anyway, were you gonna um? Were, were you trying to uh, segue into um, people coming to your house? Yeah, I would just, I wonder if the dog would pick up on people's behaviors, like people be, feeling very at home in your house, whether it be mm -hmm. a good friend of yours or whoever, you know, some people come over and they're very relaxed in your home. Would the dog get threatened or would the dog be like, what are you doing? I think as soon as he sees that I like the person, it's good. 
but like you know we we've only had them for you know what we five months now something okay so, yeah <laughs> i don't like when people come over my house and do that let alone an animal so, what we're what we're getting to is um, why we started this podcast why we thought that this was sorry all... I, i'm i'm blowing my nose here i have bad allergies go for it go for it <laughs> sorry had to be done so why nicole and i had started this podcast is we were taking note of things that really like just observations of people's behavior and and social you know i think we're in like a time like i was saying last week about how we're born in this time where we saw a lot of changes in in society with the internet social media like all these changes we were really a part of all of them like we had a beeper in high school and and then we had a cell phone in college and um we've been a part of all these things i never had a cell phone in college did you I, right after college after yeah but right after, after though right, right after yeah. yeah i had a beeper i had a pager a lot of people did yeah <laughs> so <clears throat> What Nicole and I like all love, we love to talk about is these things that people do. And it's like, is that appropriate? Is that, you know, the things that bother us, we're very Larry David in this way that we observe behaviors and, and wonder whether or not, why, why people do the things they do. And um, I had called Nicole, like maybe this is a few years ago, a friend of Ronnie's was dating this girl and um i think we had met her out one time and just didn't really like her uh there's just something about her i didn't like and she came over to our house and she put her feet on my couch barefoot barefoot yeah it was summer yeah she did take her shoes them. off but she put her feet on my couch and um i took such an issue with it it bothered me the whole night like we had ordered pizza and we were like watching the game it was like a friday night and just the whole time we're all sitting in chairs and she's over on the couch with her feet on my couch and like i just you know i remember calling you and i was like i guess i would not be bothered if i liked her or if i knew her for longer it was like the first time she had come to my house Mm. And it just upset me so much. And it, and it continued because this girl really like, it, it turned out that she was just inappropriate in all kinds of ways. And the relationship didn't last long. And um, we can laugh about it now, but at the time he was still dating her. And I remember asking him about it. Like the next time I saw him, I was like, you know, what do you, did you notice that? Wait, you, I brought, let that you couldn't let that just die down. You had to pursue. I had to ask him questions like, what do you see in this woman? <laughs> and why were her feet on my couch? Do you not think there's anything wrong with that? And he got, he defended her. Yeah, he, he got he defended her. It, it was fun because he's a funny guy and he, he, he was like, well, come on now. That's, you know, it, it turned into a whole discussion. Um, but then, you know, the, uh, the offenses continued because this girl just always did things that were overreaching, I guess you'd say. <clears throat> mm. She, we, we met her out, this is like then a little bit later, it's at the end of their relationship. We're out and she comes and she says, well, she's leaving and driving to the city. And it was like a weekend. We were out at a bar, probably watching a game or something in the neighborhood. And she tells us she's going to a birthday party and driving to the city to go like Lower East Side. And um, we were like, oh, wow. Like you're gonna drive into the city? Where are you gonna park? And she says, oh, I have my grandmother's um, not even like uh, handicap parking. It was like a next level handicap parking sign that like, yeah you can park in like an emergency spot because it's like, a, um, I don't know, there's like another level yeah. of, of because there's one level like that, that is just a handicapped spot, but then there's like another 
that you can kind of <laughs> there was no embarrassment by this it was more like bragging oh, she was bragging right yeah and I kind of you know it was like so, just rolled off her tongue so easily and then I had to wait until Ronnie and I were alone and I was like that's disgusting isn't it like I couldn't it was really like that's really awful that yeah you think that's okay to do that to use your grandmother's um, handicap parking for you to go to a club on a on a Friday night and not have to worry about parking. Yeah, I mean that's why people take the subway into the city because there's no parking. <laughs> Jesus, that, I, I I didn't realize it was the same person that did that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh God, that just comes with the territory. So many things wrong with the behavior there, like. Well, that was why I had brought it up initially because there was something about the way she put her feet on my couch that I just thought there's something there's something not right about you. You're a little too um, comfortable here. In other people's, you know, just she, um, it, it's really when it comes down to it is white privilege. I mean, you and I are great friends and I still think I wouldn't like do that necessarily. You know, it's funny though, because this happened before I came to Spain. And, and I remember telling you the story while I had my feet on your couch. <laughs> but I was, I was staying with you. And, yeah, that's, um, you were here for a long time, that's different. Also, it would be like, you come into my house and I'm like, take whatever you want. You're thirsty, you're hungry, you know. And then that gives you the red, the green light to open my refrigerator. Otherwise, that's like on the same level as just walking into someone's house and what do you got in here? Wait a second. I just met you. Right. And you're in my refrigerator. She's eating the cherries. Maybe I was going to make a pie with that. Totally. I mean, that's, I remember you were so insulted by that, that you were asking loads of people oh. hypothetically what would right. you do? And yeah. I remember I asked my brother and my brother was like, and I texted him the question and he was like, no, that is like going in someone's refrigerator. Right. And you, you used all this data. <laughs> you went back to the guy and you were like, I asked 10 people I'm asking around <laughs> and he called you a Larry David. He's like, you couldn't yeah. leave it alone. You had to go Larry David and, um, you know, survey the people. Yeah. But hey, that was a compliment. <laughs> yeah. 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 He's a funny guy. He that and that was why I could um and and as soon as he broke up with her, it was like, oh, let's really talk about her now. Because I think then the more stories came out, like, oh, you wouldn't believe, you know, she just she just was yeah, but just that's was the type of person. And oh, and by the way, um, she was a school teacher. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah. Um, it is very privileged. Let's park. Let's, uh, you know. Yeah. Let me park in a no standing zone so that I could, you know, <laughs> roll out of the. Yeah. Like where maybe a fire truck, you know, or something. Or yeah, that's what it is. You could park in front of a fire hydrant, any of the spots that anybody else can't park in. So it's basically like, a free for all uh, in in Manhattan. I mean, it's absolutely like, and but it's so abusive of yeah. your grandmother's. Aren't it's, you it's embarrassed? Not, honestly, I mean, hate to take the line, but aren't exactly. you embarrassed by that? Yeah. No, of course not. Yeah. Well, well, we live for that kind of crap. It's the kind of shit that's not funny at the moment, but then later you're like, oh yeah, I'm writing this down. This is just yeah. <laughs> another level. <laughs> yeah, she was she was um entertaining. <laughs> I was thinking about what you were saying, you know, are you not looking forward to having people over? And I was thinking about how people stay too long. You know what I mean? And um I I actually said to Ronnie the other day, I commend him on being very good at just wrapping it up when people are at our house. Cause I, I get very like okay like I don't know I'll like start cleaning up or I'll start mm -hmm. I do like passive aggressive things yeah Ronnie, Ronnie just goes okay party's over everybody out like he just will oh. end 
he'll just he kicks people out it's great but i um yeah i've never been good at that he he's good at just telling people to leave i almost think that 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 shouldn't even have to come from the host that's gotta that behavior has got to come from the guests like don't you feel like okay been here two hours um i'm gonna leave now yeah we have a a friend who stays long (laughs) long too long a little too long yeah so those kind of things well, when it comes to this whole lockdown and COVID thing, like that's, I, I look I look forward to having one-on-one things with people and seeing people one-on-one. I don't need to, I don't miss big gatherings. No. I really, really don't. Um, anyway, but that's personal. <laughs> oh God, well. Yeah, I don't think I'll be seeing you this summer, next summer. Oh, um, <clears throat> did I discuss the uh, wall for my friend upstate that? An update on it? No, but we do know, we have spoken about it before on here. Okay. We, just to update. Um, I talked to a couple business owners. This is, we got the t-shirt design and uh, on Friday, it really seemed like things were moving forward. So it's looking like July, we're gonna uh, paint a mural of my friend Lisa up in Endicott. I don't wanna say anything more because nothing, I, I, things could always fall apart, but mm-hmm. a lot of positive steps forward uh, happened on Friday. And uh, I right before I got on this call with you, I just got an email from uh, Lisa's cousin who was a big part of her um, transplant team. And um, she lives there too? She lives in South Carolina or or Rochester. There's one cousin that lives in- It's two totally Well, no, I know, but she's got two cousins. I can't remember which one lives where, Um, but she was always in in Philadelphia. I can't remember. Um, So, I'm looking forward to doing that this summer. I feel like that'll be a big positive thing for everybody um, to Can't say wait. goodbye to her. And then we'll bring the dog too. And so, we'll see how that looks when you're done. Yeah, I, 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 it's like, I feel like I already vision it happening. So it's, we just have to make sure that we uh, take care of all the details and stuff so nothing gets fucked up but when's when's the potential start date um it's gonna be in july so um not june so that's that's all i know right now we gotta we're waiting for some what weekends that's anyway good. have we is that how long did we go yeah i think i think that's about i forgot to push the button for uh a timer but i know when we started oh, oh i thought you meant we weren't even recording this no we're no recording. no no i forgot to like time myself but yeah no we're recording we're recording oh, okay. <laughs> um yeah so we will stop here and meet next week and catch uh, up and see yeah i know you and i chatted a lot on friday and i feel like i um i we chatted so much that i'm like trying to remember some of the other things we were going to talk about I but mean, I the feet on the couch. well the feet on the couch story it really was like it, it was where you and i said you know we need to start talking about these stories and um stories from the past and things that happen on a weekly basis now it's hilarious observations from annoying annoying life things right Exactly. And, uh, you know, we, I'm sure we will see more of that. Oh, wait, I know what this is like, I told you what happened this week. There was a podcast where, um, two people I knew were discussing something that uh, like was in and around, uh, this whole street art conversation that I'm a part of. And that was interesting. I talked to you about that last Mm -hmm. week. Um, so 
the street art uh, world is kind of coming back alive with the nice weather here in New York and uh, things are happening. So I got out with my camera, got some practice with my new lens on Thursday. But I'm still not just comfortable moving around as much as, you know, it just seems like everybody's very, you know, I don't, the subways are weird. I also like, um, it was funny, a, a owner of a bar was telling us, the friends of Ronnie's, um, that people are like conditioned to not be out at night anymore. Yeah. Um, he said like, even though people are out, like they go like Friday night, people were out, um, the, the bar has like an outdoor seating thing and they have TVs with like the games on and stuff. And we were there Friday night for a little bit. And, you know, we come home by nine, nine thirty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he said, after you guys left, it was packed. And then just everybody left. He said by 10 o'clock, it was empty. So even though on the 17th of May, bars and restaurants, everything can be open till I think uh, on the 17th, I think they can be open till four o'clock in the morning again. But he's like, why he, people aren't. Yeah, they're used to now. They've been used to that like curfew kind of thing. Yeah, people, he said people are conditioned. Now that's here in, you know, Bay Ridge out in like a more of a neighborhood. I don't know if that's happening in the city, but yeah, I don't think people are going out late at night as much. Yeah. Yeah. But that, and that might just be in this neighborhood. I, I bet you if I go downtown Binghamton or Binghamton, downtown Brooklyn, <laughs> uh, it's, it's uh, probably, you know, I think they can be open till 11 right now, but it will go to- That's going to be a mayhem. Another, what I think that, I think so. I mean, I think I told you like for a while, there was this thing, like the subway had a certain amount of people that they were allowed on and they would, like the turnstile would be frozen for a couple of minutes and then there'd be like a sign, be like, okay, now you can go through. Like it was trying to control, which I thought was weird because it didn't really, I didn't really notice too much of a difference, although I leave at weird times of the day. So on, on Friday, I mean, I haven't seen this happen in a long time where they're doing that anymore, like telling you when you can pass through. Friday, I, I came home from work at like a rush hour time and I couldn't believe it. I, it was the first time since I've been on the subway this whole year where I was like back to this again. And I was like, whoa, they're not, they're totally not even doing this anymore. They're just letting people. And I actually got a little nervous because people here aren't really vaccinated younger people yet. I mean, and I was like, okay, um, I'm glad I'm not doing this again. Cause that was my last day of traveling. Oh, that's but right. You're all, you're all done now. I do have exams, but I don't have to go in anymore. I think I have to go in one day in June at some point, but I'm not, I'm not getting on that. I just, I, I, People are animals. I can't. <laughs> can't deal with these people. It's because other people. But if you go on the subway, you have to have a mask on. Oh, yes? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not allowed even through the thing. But I'm just saying people are like on top of you, picking their skin, flicking their shit. And I'm just like, do you have any uh, self-awareness? No. I don't know. I should be used to that though. I've been taking the subway right. for decades. I just don't, <laughs> it never ceases to, to amaze me like the way people behave with that. <laughs> well, that's, that's one of the positives I think from COVID is that we've um, distanced ourselves enough from other people that we're like, you know what, this is healthier you know, um, we don't need to, I don't want to be on top of people like that. I don't want to be crammed on the subway like that. Uh, no. And if I am, I can take precautions to be as safe as possible. Because you think about a couple of years ago, I used to get a crazy cold and I knew I would catch it on the subway. Yep. I would always get some yep. crazy 24 hour cold and I had, I didn't get a cold all winter because I didn't go anywhere. Everybody, a lot of people didn't, right. but I used to always get these like stupid 24 hour bugs. Yeah, bugs. And I know I caught that on the subway. Somebody sneezed on me and breathed. And on I you. wouldn't get like a, a flu or anything like that, but I would definitely get taken down by something I caught on the train. 
And I think uh, just being aware of our surroundings and how close we are to other people, I think that's, I think that awareness is good. Stay away. Pick and choose who we want to spend time with, too. <laughs> Bless you. It's Be selective. Like, this is allergies. I got to, I got to, like, close my windows. All right. I'm suffering here. On that note. <laughs> close your windows. Get rid of the pollen. Yeah. And I'll see you next week. All right. Well, I hope that you feel better. Thanks. It's temporary. It is. All right. All right. Take care. Bye.